Right, we're back here again. This is my two-wheel drive KLF 300, which is, it works. You know, it kind of does what you expect it to. It just, it just works. It's a bit tappity tappity, but I've tweaked the valves and it's still a bit tappity tappity. I think I could probably come back and check the oil path to make sure. I could you know, basically use the compressor and blow out some of these cables here just to make sure that it's getting oil up to the top end but if I take the valve covers off yeah, they're oiled I just don't know if it's got enough volume of oil coming through it but otherwise working bike amazing 23 what's that um, uh, 1993 um, so 30 years <laughs> it is isn't it? amazing right over here is my uh, four-wheel drive Okay, left. This was always going to be a parts bike when I got it. There's some, I don't know what is that is. That, uh, hang on, this thing here, uh, gearbox. He was pointing at this and oh, this needs doing and stuff. And there was like it, there was bits on it that were loose, and I just thought, yeah, I'm expecting this engine to be not in a happy place. So I'm probably, I mean, I could sh assume it's good, but I'm probably going to disassemble it really just so that I learn how. How the things work and while i'm disassembling it maybe i can take some some parts right because i've got an awful lot of spare parts that i bought or just acquired uh, and store it so i i think at some point um the cv joint either on the front here i don't know if it's actually on this drive shaft here or if it's something to do with that which is exposed because this gator in there is crap I don't know what I'm pointing at, sorry. But anyway, that's completely split in there. Oh God, where are we going? Where's the torch? Hey. I've got my little Chinese heater on here, look. The horse is willy, keeping it nice and warm. All right. Yeah, that, that gator down there. I don't know I'm pointing at a knackered gator, but yeah, it's completely split there. So there's, uh, high possibility that I'll need to take it off this one which is not split so I don't know spares parts anyway right here we go so this one if I start it and this has been in my other videos where if I fire it up now uh, it will tick over absolutely fantastic if I rev it have you said that it will then misfire go lumpy bumpy it's all a bit horrible and I've not managed to work out why I suspect that the coil, it, the cable, and, and that spark plug cover thing, I suspect that was causing an issue. So if that's the last thing I swapped out, and I think it did improve it a little bit. I really don't want to start it, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to die in here. I'll choke, literally, look, choke. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's see. Oh, there's no fuel tank. So the fuel tank's disconnected. So. Look at that. Yeah, it's going to start, so I'm happy with that. That was the choke. Oh, look at this beautiful, this, this amazing. <laughs> it's crazy, it, it, this bike. And I didn't rev it, so I'm not dying of bloody carbon monoxide at the moment, which is good. But anyway, if I start it, rev it up and everything, I'm going to get a lot of smoke. That might be because I put oil in the um, spark pluggy thingy in there just to test the compression just to make sure it was up above 100 and I think it went up about 110 120 which was like yeah that'll do so every time I run it now and rev it I get a lot of smoke I'm rather hoping that it that will burn out when I eventually get it over to the door open the door and when it's not chucking down with rain outside so it's the fact that it takes over so beautifully quiet so we try to want, this is the working bike, right? Little bit of choke, put this on. Again, no fuel tank. So will it start? Is it in neutral? Yeah. More tanky. Working bike. A different noise. Definitely tanky, bit slappy. So maybe there's a problem there in terms of the engine, but you know, it works. So I just use it. It only cost me like 300 pounds. 
um, and then a bit of tickling up like some new tires on the back and some bits and pieces but these bikes don't owe me any money you know they're so cheap they're amazing uh, right so here I am the plan is then complete working spares two wheel drive not quite right four wheel drive so the next thing I'm going to do look at the travel see that look at that compared to that I never really looked at the difference between a four and a two this is definitely higher I mean I don't know if it's because it's got bigger wheels on the front or something but the, the front end on, I always feel like the, it's a bit like a tractor you know big tires at the back small ones on the front so it's kind of got this sort of aspect it would be nice just to balance it and I think that's why I quite like the, the four wheel drives it's a little bit more no I don't know maybe it's psychological this definitely feels lower down definitely feels like it's leaning forwards I reckon definitely more upright this might be the handlebars anyway right look how big the springs are there's definitely more going on there isn't there I didn't realise there was much difference but I suppose there must be look, it's got two control arms and it's got two but they could both go down where those are like parallel I suppose yeah because the wheels I suppose it's got to go like that hasn't it other than this one I'm guessing it more I don't know what I'm talking about right so what's this one got oh yeah I took them off <laughs> they're in a box somewhere okay interesting yeah, I'm just waffling now yeah definitely better on the front isn't it so smaller and more nimble you know four wheel drive probably got a massive turning circle I've done everything else on here all the brakes have been done they're all beautiful the all of the drums and all that in the back that's all been done that was completely seized up so that's all lovely in there now and all been all of that all of that metal right there was just a big pile of rust has this got yeah. I'm at least on here so there's dual drums on the back here by the look of it this one's only got one on the right hand side but that was completely seized up it was locked up so all that stuff's been done I'm now just trying to get this worked out as to why I can't rev it up without it backfiring if I was to I mean it's no surprise here if I was to take the cover off the inlet here I would actually get a backfire out of the inlet so next next thing to do I'm going to take the carb off the working bike put it on here see what it sounds like that's my next kind of process of elimination I suppose I've already done like CDI from here to here I've got spare CDIs onto here didn't do anything I had a CDI off that bike as well. Didn't change anything. It, it, this bike reacts the same. So, carburetor. And if nothing changes, then I know it's not the carb. The carb will go back on that bike. This one can retain its one. And I move on to something else. What that is, I don't know. But here we go. I'm gonna go move the carbs. Let's see. Right, here we go, back again. That's it. This, this is the carb off of the, or it's the suspect carb right now off of that bike and clearly that carb is on there and I've literally just put it on oh look excellent oh dear okay uh, I'm gonna have to cut that hose aren't I I'll maybe put the clip on properly that might help or not let's see Okay, let's see what happens. Right, swap the carb out. Do this. Do we do a bit of that? No, let's do no choke. Yep, kicking over amazingly as normal. No, bit of choke. all of that, oh, geez, stinks in here now. 
Well, how about that? It's a bloody carburetor again. I could I could prove it by putting that one on here and it'll run crap, but that is no longer backfiring. Oh, it really stinks in here. So what should I do? I might actually move the bike around here, open that door so the exhaust is pointing out, um, run it up again and give it a few more beans because that smoke coming out the back, I still think it's because I put some in the uh, to test the compression. So rather than kill myself, and as I've kind of proved what I wanted to prove today, that was a carburation issue. Who'd have thought that, eh? That's one of the first things that was done. Oh well, you know, that's the point of this. Oh, right. right. I'm gonna move the bike, stick its bum out that door, and then uh, see if we can get rid of this smoke. Uh, just so I know whether or not the engine is completely knackered, piston ring shot to pieces, or whether or not it's smoking because of the oil. Here we go. Whee! Right. There it goes. Stuff's happening apart from it's filling up the smoke here. It's still quite smoky, so I don't know whether or not that's because of like piston rings and stuff. Very smoky. It's just 
going to go and order a carb for it and call that progress I haven't really got a lot to say but I think that's I think that's good news I think as for the smoke well you know talked about maybe using some of this engine but I'll see what that one's like inside having never taken an engine apart before no idea I've actually got a camshaft somewhere but I don't think this is a camshaft issue I don't don't think uh, if it's burning oil like that, then presumably it's going to be low of oil. Oh, look. What's that? Ah, that's the carb. Okay. That's that's the bottom of the float. That's interesting. Oh, look at that. Yeah, okay, good. Let's have, a, let's have that off then. I wonder why that's leaking quite so much. Who knows? What does that do? There's a thing down there. What's that? Is that like a speeder or something, that cable? Oh yeah, it goes through to there. Oh, that's the reverse thingy. That's all that is. I just looked down there and saw that gate. It looked a bit crappy, but uh, it went into reverse. That's all we care about. Right. Onward, upward, later takers. <laughs> 